Hello, fight friends. MMA Andy Cotterell here with the man who you recognize right now on the screen is obviously Mark Andre Berrio, who is fighting Chris Curtis at UFC 297 in uh, Toronto on January 20th, which is only two weekends away. Mark Andre, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing great. Thank you. I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with me. I know that even, uh, you know, the week before the fight, there's still a lot of effort and a lot of training that's going in. So, you know, your body's pretty, probably pretty tired right now, isn't it? Yeah. So right now, like, you know, it's almost time to shine. A uh, couple last days was more like about just the final touches, you know, and the, it was like a perfect training camp for me. Um, at this point, I just focus on quality over quantity. So, yeah, I feel very good. I feel like everything is at the right place and I'm, I'm ready to go. That's fantastic. One thing I'd like to focus on at the start of our talk right now is your decision to leave your full-time training in Canada and go down to the States. You, you did this a couple of years ago. You're down in Killcliffe. So would you mind just be talking about how you first became aware of that gym? You're in Florida. And what appeal? What was appealing about it to you and why you decided to move down? And once you're down, what your life is like down in Florida? Yeah, so like back in like, 2021 like when all the covid and everything happened you know uh in canada we were like in a like pretty intense lockdown you know so i was not able to train as much as i want um so the ufc uh, was still going on you know and i had a fight uh at the apex so i had to do something like to uh to to make myself ready to be ready for the for this fight so there's one of my good buddy Julian LeBlanc, who is uh, he's a long time training partner of me, and he was coming like here in Florida back and forth uh, with uh, with his uh, girlfriend, and he said to me, Mark, you have to come down here and to try the the, the gym, you know, uh, the back in the days it was uh, Sanford MMA, now it's Kilcliffe FC, mm -hmm. but I said, bro, I think yeah, I think I have to 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 jump on and try it. So I packed my stuff and I, 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 I came here for like two weeks and I right away I fell in love with the, the, the energy, uh, all the spirit in the gym. So I did like two weeks here uh, training camp. Then I went back to Canada. I finished my camp with my, my, my team there. Uh, we went to the, the Apex. That was a crazy experience, you know, because with all the tests, the, 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 the mask, everything was like, like, very very crazy but yeah we managed that and we won the fight so i was very very happy uh and after that like i said okay mark i think it's time to move on and try different things and i i i asked my 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 girlfriend at the time now it's my wife uh, she's my wife but i said babe we we have to go we have to do something new and she was with me right away uh, we we pack everything um, I sold everything I have in, in Canada. Uh, I packed in my, my travel trailer with my truck. So we drove all the way to Florida and then the journey started right away. And yeah, here I am now, three years later. It's funny how this, what you went through to do that, it can be translated across all sorts of different types of people. Like it's not just a fighting specific thing, but some people they make that big decision. They're going to make a big move somewhere for the betterment of their life for whatever yeah. reason. And I think it takes a special kind of person that, to make that kind of decision because, you know, it must've been a pretty scary thing to do. Was it? Oh, for sure. And you know, sometimes you have to jump off the plane without, without knowing, you know, if you have a safety or a parachute, you know, you just have to figure out, you know, uh, uh, along the way. So I'm the type of guy who like to, you know, uh, put myself out of my comfort zone and just try different things and just see, you know, what kind of opportunity I, I, I can create, you know, uh, when I allow myself to just uh, try different things. So, yeah, I was not very scared to try this this time, but still, you know, it, it was a lot of uh, unknown, you know, so I just trust, trust my instinct. I, I know myself. I'm more self-aware now. Uh, as I'm getting older, more wisdom. So I feel like I'm in the right spot, uh, like as an athlete, but also as a human being. Uh, talk a little bit about your daily life down in Florida. Like where exactly in Florida is Kill Cliff? What city? So yeah, the, 
uh, Kill Cliff FC is in Deerfield Beach, Florida. So it's kind of in the middle between like West Palm Beach and uh, Fort Lauderdale. So it's I think it's the perfect spot. Uh, it's not too like crowded here, but it's still you know that uh, we have the beaches very close. Uh, everything is like perfect. The weather, uh, the environment, you know, the team. Uh, no, I cannot complain. When when fight fans watch fighting events like the UFC, they'll see you fight, they'll see other fighters fight, and they'll see you 15 minutes, maybe 25 minutes for a championship fight, and maybe they see an interview before or an interview after, but after that, they don't really see what fighters go through, what their lives are like. Talk a little bit about just what a normal day is like for Marc-Andre Mark Barrio in Florida. Like, what time do you wake up? What do you have? Do you have breakfast? You know, how often do you train? Yeah. What do you do when you're not training? So, yeah, no, it's a very good, like, question. And a lot of people don't very see the behind the scenes, you know. They just they just see, like, the, the 15 minutes and, you know, but most of the time we are, like, we still are human beings. So we need to, you know, take care of yourself, make sure that we are, like, in the right place mentally, uh, physically. So I like to do, like, different stuff, you know, just to put myself in the, the, the good mood, you know. I like to listen listen uh, country music uh, me and my wife we like to cook a lot so I'm a fun fact about myself is uh, before uh, being a, a professional fighter I did some culinary uh, school so I'm a chef also so Ooh. I do really like enjoy uh, cooking uh, I think I go to the grocery store like every day just to pick up some stuff fresh organic food uh, come back to my house and like just have fun cooking. Um, yeah, so I woke up like at 7 a.m. in the morning. We have two dogs, so I like to play outside with the dogs. Um, I like to enjoy having uh, like a cold plunge right away in the morning, like a very mm -hmm. cold plunge just to wake up myself. And then I do some stretching. Then I have breakfast, coffee. Uh, and it's time to leave for the for the for the training. Uh, so I, I'm training every morning from 9 a.m. to like maybe 11. Um, after that, come back home, uh, just having a, just a good rest. Sometimes I have a nap, just sleep between session. Uh, I eat and then I go back like at 5, 5.30 to my second training of the day and come back after that. And then, yeah, just do normal stuff. Uh, sometimes I like to play games with my wife, uh, go take a walk with the dogs and it's time to just to have a good night of sleep and do it again the next mm -hmm. day. When you're going through the, the fight and pre-fight and post-fight cycle, like leading up to a fight and when a fight's over, does your intensity level for training change? So what I mean by that is after your fight and you go back to the gym after a week or a few days or whatever it is, do you start off just taking it kind of easy and sort of build up during a fight camp? Or are you sort of steady state where you, all your training, you're, you're the same intensity? No. So it's different from a, for myself, like it's a lot of push and pull, you know, now I'm in the push like phase, you know, I need to push hard because I have a fight, but when, when I'm not in a fight, you know, fight camp. I like to just, I like to go in the morning, just have fun, like do my, 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 my job, you know, it's to, it's to show up, get the, the work in, and then I can come back. And after that, I can enjoy life a little bit. Uh, don't stress myself to go another, another session. Absolutely. So if I feel like I can go, I go, or I'm more like in the mood, you know, if I feel like, okay, let's, let's do, do session or more like, like specific work with, with a partner or go for a private session with a coach or, but most of the time I like to allow myself to just calm down, go play golf, uh, you know, go at the beach, uh, just, yeah, just enjoying life between the, the training camps because for the last like five or four years, I've been pretty active, like three to four, like at least three five fights a year. So, you know, mm. it's, uh, it's hard, uh, on the body, mind, but yeah, I I, I think I found my, the right, you know, um, ju ju just the right recipe uh, for myself. Uh, so right now I feel like I can just focus sometimes on quality work. Sometimes I need to put more quantity, 
but for sure I'm more aware of what I what I need and what I want. Would you mind talking a little bit about the, the, the training partners you have at Kill Cliff? Like, are there main training partners for you? Yeah, so the, the, the Kill Cliff FC has been a huge game changer for me. Like, at the beginning, you know, it's uh, it's kind of a, like a big ocean, you know, full of sharks, you know. And I, I know that I'm a, I'm a big shark, but I, I needed to just to, to, to see myself in the, this big ocean and just to try to figure out where I can be on the, the on that food chain, you know. And now I feel like I'm one of the a good leader in the gym, you know, just by my just by my attitude and just by my the way that I'm carrying myself in and out of the gym. So yeah, we have a lot of you know high level uh, training partners uh, in the, 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 the this room. Um, like it, it depends. Uh, you know uh, which which opponent you have to you know you have to fight uh, in order to have some specific training partners. But most of the time, I have some guys that that I like to work with. Um, you know, I have Angla Insang who's gonna be with me and uh, in my in my in my fight. He's the former one FC uh, two division champion. Mm-hmm. So he, he's like he's a very nice guy. You know, he's always there to help each uh, each other. And he's been a champion for a long time. So this guy knows, you know, what it takes to, to be at the best. So, yeah. And we have guys like, uh, you know, uh, Brandon Allen. Uh, we have Gregory yeah. Rodriguez, Roboca. Uh, there's a lot of middleweight, actually, in, the, in, in this gym. But we all know that we're here for the same reason. We know that we are training partner for now. And if one day we have to fight each other, you know, it's going to be time for business. But for now... We just try to, you know, help each other be uh, the best and represent the gym. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, Aaron Jeffrey, who fights for Bellator and who, who you know, he told me once that he really enjoys going down to first Sanford and now Killcliffe because as much as he loves his gym, Niagara Top Team, fantastic gym, they just don't have as many big guys as he needs because he's a bigger guy as well. So are you, when it comes to scale level for size wise, are you still one of the bigger guys at middleweight or are there enough training partners for you at, at that weight class? Yeah, no, definitely. There's a lot of big guys in the gym, you know, and, you know, Aaron is one of the, one of the guys who I like, I enjoy, you know, uh, training with when he's, when he's here with us, you know, he's, he's the kind of guy who like to push the pace. He, you know, he's, he's a great guy, great fighters, you know, probably the yeah. next champion, uh, PFL, Bellator, whatever. But yeah, for, for my, my myself, I feel like you know I'm not the biggest middleweight even in the UFC, but I know I know where I am. You know I know what what of my my my, my qualities. Uh, I'm durable. I'm, I'm I have a good, great cardio. You know I'm tough. Um, I'm always willing to learn. So you know I think that that that's the the thing that all the the other guys can enjoy. You know uh, training with me, and it's it's a lot of give and take. You know sometimes I'm the uh, I'm the hammer. Sometimes I'm the nail, and it's okay where, like yeah. that. You know, it's 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 how we grow. So, no, I I feel like we have the 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 best team right now for me to 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 evolve. How does it work for you as a Canadian uh, training full time in the states? Is it like a special kind of visa or something? Uh, yeah. So as long as I'm fighting for the UFC, you know, they they provide me a P1 visa. So it's like a visa for athletes or artists. So, mm. yeah. So as long as I'm, I'm in the, the, the UFC, I, I can do, I can st- uh, stay here to train and fight, but I'm not allowed to, to do other work uh, other than, uh, than, than training and fighting. Yeah. Yeah. But s- since I'm here, I started working with um, an attorney to have my green card. So I'm supposed to have, the final answer, like very soon after the fight, probably I'm going to be approved uh, to, for the green card. So for me and my wife, uh, we can we can start another business or just, you know, uh, start a life yeah. here because we want to stay here for as long as we can. And I feel like, you know, that that's my place, even though I, I'm still representing Canada. But for now, I feel like for my career and for myself, uh, I'm in the right spot right now. Now, speaking about representing Canada, uh, this next UFC you were fighting in Canada. I think, it, is it for the first time for the UFC for you? 
it's the first time for me uh, in Toronto, but I fought three other times in Canada. I did my, my, my debut in Ottawa back in uh, 2019, and then I fought in Edmonton, yeah. and then I fought, la my last fight was in Vancouver last June. Do you find there's a difference in the crowd and the reception for you in Canadian UFC crowds as opposed to elsewhere? I mean, for myself, I'm not a, a like a pressure guy. I like to, I like to stay in the moment. Uh, just make sure that you know I'm, I'm aware of myself and know where I'm, what I'm gonna do. And I'm, I'm kind of enjoying the crowd after the fight when I realize like what's going on outside of the, the octagon and just yeah. like be in the moment and be proud of myself. It's funny how uh, the fans have impressions and ideas of fighters and what they're like. And the, the impression of you, uh, rightly or wrongly, is that you are mainly a striker, same as Charles Jourdain. Yeah. So I have to tell you personally, as a, you know, I'm a, I'm a journalist, but I'm also a fan. I love watching the fights. My happiest moment was a couple of years ago when you and Charles were fighting in the same fight card and you both got submission victories in the same night. I was just over the moon when that happened. Yeah, that was a crazy night for us. Uh, I know, you know, this fight, my back was against the wall. I, I was coming off a, a knockout loss, you know, and I took the fight like on, I think, 11 days notice. And I went there and I just said to myself, Mark, just go. Go and just do your things. Don't think too much. Just, just do. And yeah, I think this is where at my where I, I'm at my best when I am not overthinking and I'm just doing. And this is what happened. He gave me his neck. I I I sing the choke and yeah, that was my first ever uh, professional submission victory, and I was very proud of myself. Yeah. You sh you should be. It was it was really impressive yeah. to watch, and it made a lot of people very happy. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go on now to uh, this UFC. You're fighting Chris Curtis. Now, to be honest, very open and honest with you, I don't really pay attention to much MMA unless it's Canadian. Like, I pay attention to Canadian events, and I really only watch UFCs that have Canadian fighters in them. So I don't really know much about him. In fact, I don't know anything about him other than that he's he's successful and that a lot of people think he's very funny. He's like a comedian. Tell me what you know about Chris Curtis and what you think about him as somebody you're coming up against. Yeah, no, I like the guy. He's a character, you know. He's 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 in the same, uh, you know, the same uh, crew of uh, Sean Strickland. So those guys like to to talk a lot. They like to, you know, they like to have the spot, the spotlight. But you know, in a fight, it's another game. You know, for myself, um, I don't let anything, you know, uh, like I, 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 I'm not trying to uh, do too much thing i just want to be in the moment and don't don't, don't try to uh to to play uh, those games you know with those guys because you know i'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not that yeah. type of guy i like to stay humble and i like to just fight hard and yeah chris i have a lot of respect for for this guy especially because you know um you know he, he accepted the fight to fight me like i'm not even ranked and he's ranked so i think he like it's it's not a, like a win-win situation for for him like he, I'm, I'm coming hard i'm coming to win you know and i'm coming to to take his spot in, in the ranking so mm -hmm. uh yeah huge respect for the guy i know he's gonna be there to fight hard he's durable um he's a veteran you know he has more than 35 or i think 40 uh, professional fights so yeah, yeah. yeah he, he's og and i'm i'm, I'm very like I'm I'm very happy to test myself against uh, against this guy. If you could uh, talk to yourself after the fight, like post fight, Mark Andre, how would you explain to yourself what you think a perfect fight would be against uh, Chris Curtis? What would that mean to you? Yeah, uh, you know I know my style, and even though we are you know planning like a specific game plan for 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 this fight. Uh, I know like I'm more like I'm relying more on my instinct, you know, most of the time. Uh, but I, w I think in my, my, my previous fight, we can see like I'm getting more comfortable, more mature, more fighting IQ. So I just want to keep going like that, like showing that I'm, 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 I'm smart. Uh, I don't need to take unnecessary damage just to take one and to give one. I can be like the guy who lead the dance and 
you know, do some damage and yeah, uh, be more smart. And when the time comes to just bite in the mouthpiece and just exchange, I know I can do. But I want to be proud of myself. No regrets at the end of the fight, win or lose. I just want to have the feeling that I, I left inside in the cage uh, for myself, for the crowd and for the UFC. And then I can move on and keep, keep working. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So let's, uh, best case scenario, you have an outstanding performance. You have a really impressive victory over Chris Curtis. Uh, he's ranked. You're not ranked currently. So where does that put you, I guess, into the rankings? What do you think? And, and what would that look like for you for your next fight? Yeah, I mean, right now the ranking doesn't mean nothing, I think, because, you know, we, we saw guys, you know, not even ranked, jump in the ranking. Our guys are, are already mm -hmm. ranked and then... It's it's kind of you know it's 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 I don't I don't think it's gonna matter for me. I just want to have a good performance. I just want to take you know every fight like it's my last fight, you know, because this is where I'm at my best. Um, yeah. If, yeah. if if I'm ranked, you know, after this fight, if I can take a spot, I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna be very happy. But I'm I'm kind of I'm in the re weird spot because. There are some guys, you know, uh, before me that already beat me, you know, guys like Anthony Hernandez, uh, Jung Jung Park, those guys beat me a couple years ago. And if I want this fight and I take the spot, you know, the, it's going to be like, I don't know, uh, we'll see, we'll see after the fight. But yeah, yeah. For, for, for sure, I'm just going to look forward uh, and we'll see what the UFC offer me after this fight next. They know that I'm always willing to take fights, even though it's last minute fight or, you know, uh, a, a big yeah. fight in Canada or even here in Florida. We don't know. So, I mean, the 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 Miami card looks great, but it, that's going to be too short between those uh, th those those uh, yeah. fights. So I'm going to take my yeah. time after and just, you know, figure out what's next and we'll see. Fantastic. Okay, Mark Andre, that's all I really any questions I have. I just like to thank you so much for speaking with us. Um, you know, I know it's it's always busy leading up to the fight, so I do truly appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And I was wondering if there's anybody you'd like to thank or any last minute words. Yeah, my pleasure. I'm always willing to you know uh, meet with you guys and uh, have a good chat. Uh, yeah, for myself, I just I'm just inviting you to watch the the UFC 297. Uh, in, in my country, Canada. I'm, I'm very happy to represent uh, Canada, even though I'm, I'm in the U.S. right now. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I just want to, you know, give a huge shout out to my, my gym uh, in Canada, uh, uh, Pat Nold Martial Arts, uh, with yeah. my, my longtime trainer and mentor, uh, Sifu Pat Marcel. Uh, he's going to be there with me uh, in the fight. Uh, and also all the Great. guys uh, down here in Florida at Kilcliff FC. So yeah, I can wait. I can wait to you know represent uh, my roots, represent my new team, and just have fun and yeah, enjoy the show, guys. Well, thank you again, Marc Andre. Uh, good luck at UFC 297. I'm sure Canada will be cheering for you. Thank you.